Hello, YouTubers. Um, so, this is the second edition of my most viewed video. How to fix the black screen. And this is one of my client's laptop. So, this is what happens. You tried everything that in the first video and it still does not work. So, this is the symptom. You turn it on. Then you can definitely hear fans you know running or computers kind of running you, you can see the buttons dialed up so it's not completely dead it's it's sort of alive but nothing shows up on the screen black screen so how to fix this is that so you need to tune up so the issue here is that there's a graphics card inside. You can see it has a dedicated AMD Vision graphics card inside, or you could have the NVIDIA graphics card inside. What happens is if you use them and it gets overheated, maybe you use in a bed or something like that, and then what happens is um, they just die. They're soldered into the motherboard with like hundreds of soldering, you know, hundreds of pins soldered into the board. And then what happens is that at certain point of time they overheat and then they cool down you know when you turn it off and then you turn it back on and it overheats and then you turn it off and it cools down it does it over and over again and then some of the pins the soldering iron comes off and then if one of them come off it, it's dead and then at that point what I'm gonna the technique I'm gonna show you here is called the reflow so before we do anything else first of all you're gonna have to figure out how to open the laptop and then get to the motherboard I hope you can find a video on YouTube maybe you know how to open the laptop machine the specific laptop machine that you have and if you don't it's gonna be a little tough but I'm gonna pause it and then I'm going to open it all the way up and then come back all right so I opened successfully managed to open it all up and then found out the graphics card and the CPU so if you open it up take out your motherboard like this you're gonna see a heat sink first so I'm gonna go ahead take out the heat sink with the correct number order and then there's a cable always a connector cable to it and if you take that off, you can take off the the CPU. I mean the the heat sink cooling fan. And then so now what you have to do is I don't know why they have this kind of sticker over here, but I'm gonna take that sticker off. So now what we need to mainly focus on here is the GPU and most of your guys laptop will have this this thermal thermal sponge shit what it is it's just trying to fill up the gap between the GPU and the heat sink which is really crappy and after that I'm gonna go ahead and take off the CPU because CPU is okay. So make sure you put this, don't, do not put this on top of a uh, metal, water, nothing like that. Try to put it on top of a, like a, like an anti-static bag. I have a place for mine. So once you put that somewhere safe, now it's time to fold up anything that is not GPU and how to do that is here I have four aluminum foils that I folded up twice just gonna basically simply cover up the entire thing except the GPU so there's the first area you have a hole like this 
this is the second wave. It's kind of a bit short. It's a long motherboard. those of you who does not understand what I'm doing basically what I'm doing right now is to so aluminum they kind of protect the other stuff from the heat that's what it's doing so now I can basically see that you can see that I cover them everything that is not the GPU and before I do anything, if you have a lot of stuff on your graphics card, you might want to give it a good clean. But for my case, I think it's pretty clean already. And I don't need to, it's not like covered with thermal paste or anything like that. So make sure, now it's, make sure this thing is holded on steady, that it's not going to move around while you're doing the job. Kind of be a hassle. So I can kind of see that board itself won't move anymore and then it will just kind of stay like that. So this is the where the dilemma kicks in. Oh, make oh by the way, before you do that, uh, make sure you take out the BIOS battery, which should be on the other side. Or Okay, this is kind of like an old style desktop BIOS battery. Alright, so the reason why you have to take out the battery is so you don't burn the battery off. There's chemical stuff inside that you don't want to burn them off. And uh, you might want to get rid of the, all the stickers on the motherboard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up this area and make sure everything, all the soldering iron behind it melts down and then let it cool down and they kind of like re-solder themselves. Um, some people use hair dryer, some people could use blowtorch, some people could use... Some people, I've seen some people putting this whole thing in the oven and then just kind of melting everything and then resoldering everything. I do not um, suggest oven, but whatever you have, whatever tool you have, something that burns hot air or hot fire, it would be good to use. I have a soldering station which is only like fifty seventy dollars and I'm just gonna basically turn it on so now I'm going to start so basically what you want to do here is heat it up So I'm going to set my stopwatch like that, and then I'm going to start with 100 degrees. And then I'm just going to do this for uh, 8 minutes. And then I'm talking about Fahrenheit right now, but no, I'm, gonna, I'm talking about Celsius. And then... I'm going to heat this up to about 380 Celsius degree and then gradually heat it up 
and then I'm gonna heat it up to 380 degrees and then before 8 minute ends I'm gonna come down to 100 degrees and cool it down uh, if you're using hair dryer wolf torch those are kind of extreme tools I should say because you can't gradually heat it up you just kind of heat it up and then um, so how long do you have to do this if you're doing a if you're using something other than what I'm using well if the soldering iron starts to melt down you can kind of smell something melting down you can kind of smell that when you start to smell that don't freak out just keep burning just keep heat it up until maybe about a minute or a minute half more when you start to smell something burning off and then you just kind of gradually cool it down and then your job is done so I'm gonna this is what I'm doing just evenly doing it make sure you do not hit the chips in So it's been about 6 minutes, 30 seconds, so I'm gradually cooling things down with the temperature. Make sure when, you're, when you do this, do not touch the chips of it so that could fuck up it, that could fuck it up. I have a minute left, just keep doing it, and then Alright, so it's been almost 8 minutes, and I'm just doing the last thing, just kind of cooling it down. It's been 8 minutes. And so I'm going to stop heating this up. And I'm going to turn off the machine. And then so now what you do is you just wait till this cools down. Give it maybe about a good 10 minutes to cool down. So I'm going to give it maybe about 10 minutes to cool this thing off. So now we're going to have to apply the new thermal grease on it to make sure that it won't happen again. So the trick here is applying the new thermal grease. I have shit tons of thermal grease left. I already kind of did apply some of it over here. But I'm going to apply even more to it. And then, one thing you might have to do here is that um, the old GPU had a thermal sponge. This is just to refill the gap. And I'm going to do it with a penny this time. Or if you have a copper heat sink, then you can use that. But I am currently out of copper heat sink, which is sad. And then now after you apply thermal grease on both sides you would just put things back in ah. gently and then tighten it with 
equal amount of torque. One, two, three, four. So now since there's a copper to it which is a thicker which is thicker than sponge we're not going to tighten it all the way we're actually going to tighten leave it a tiny bit of space to it So that is done. All right, so the job is done. And then you put the BIOS battery back in. And now what you gotta do is, whichever order you took this out, you gotta put it back in. So I assembled the laptop all the way up back. And then I didn't, I didn't assemble it fully because you never know if you got it fixed or not. So when you have to the stage where you got motherboard and in and then the chassis and you got RAMs in and you got power switch connected and you got battery hooked in, you can start it up, see if it works or not. And then which is what I'm going to do that. So it starts. There you go. See that? Started right up. You can see it started. Okay. So, since it started, now what we have to do is assemble it back. And then, uh, hopefully, next time you can keep your laptop cooler and make sure it doesn't happen again. Uh, if you have any questions or re relating this topic, how to do the reflow, and question like that, leave me a comment and I'll try to answer them. Thanks for watching.